Hi everybody, this is Mike Hermes at MH Tutorials and today we're going to do a request and this request came from Juliana and her question was can you model a crumbled ball of paper? Now I already explained to her that for me that's a bit of a challenge because I have no idea how to do that, right? I've never seen it done, I've never found anything on the web doing that except for uh, you know manually tweaking uh, vertices uh, to get that modeled but I came up with a way that maybe will work okay so let's see if we can make that happen all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating a um, let's say a cube something like that we're gonna pull that up hit 5 for shaded mode right click on the top take that face and hit delete okay now we're gonna tweak this a little bit because we want this to have a pretty irregular shape okay so right click vertex and we're just gonna start to tweak them in an kind of an off way if you know what I mean we do not want this to be a regular shape okay and mainly <clears throat> looking at the bottom of this then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple of shapes and put them inside so I'm just gonna push that in let's uh, I don't know push a cylinder in something like that and just push that in there don't mind that it's sticking out that's fine <clears throat> just something like that okay okay now that we have that we're gonna drag select the whole thing we're going to go to our polygons menu to mesh and combine so that's it now we're going to focus on creating our uh, paper <clears throat> we're going to take a polygon plane and we're going to drag that out to maybe something like that go to your polyplane tab and let's increase subdivisions to 10 by 10 maybe a bit more let's say 15 by 15 looks a little bit better okay we're gonna drag that up we're gonna hit E we're gonna rotate that and we're gonna rotate it again something like so hit W and we're gonna move that into position that it's sitting above our box okay now as you can see it's quite big so we're going to hit R, we're going to scale it down a bit, maybe something like that, all right. While we have our object selected, we're going to go to our end dynamics menu. We're going to select uh, end mesh and create end cloth, like so. And we're going to select this object down here, end mesh and create passive collider, okay. Now we're going to select our end cloth. Uh, we're going to add quite a few frames, let's say 2,000, okay? We're going to zoom in, right-click vertex, drag, select that top vertex there, and go up to and constraint and transform, all right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our end solver and interactive playback, okay? So our animation is starting to run. We're going to hit W, and we're going to start to lower that into our box. And as you can see, it's kind of tricky to get that in there. Let's just uh, stop our animation for a sec. Okay. Now, right now, it looks more like a, a folded piece of cloth, not necessarily a piece of paper. So we're going to go back to our starting point. There it is. <clears throat> and we're going to give this a little bit more subdivision. So select your object, shift, right click, and smooth, which will give us that. It will probably slow down our simulation quite a bit, but nevertheless, let's give this a try. So we're at frame one again. Uh, select your top vertex and solver interactive playback. Let's hit W. Let's bring that down. 
into our box and hit stop. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to take our box and we're going to move that out of the way. Okay. Now this is starting to look better. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just select my object, go to edit, delete by type, history, which will allow me to hit E. I'll just go to modify center pivot. And I need to fix this. So double click on my movement tool, object orientation. Actually, that doesn't really, oh, there we go. Yep. Okay, we're going to hit E. Let's uh, flip that over. All right. And here you have something that looks uh, fairly close to, and I'll just get rid of this, a crumbled piece of paper. All right. So that's what I came up with. Uh, maybe we can texture this a little bit. And uh, let's see how that looks. I'll just uh, create a ground plane here. We'll make our paper white-ish. So I'll assign new material, Lambert. Uh, let's make that a bit wider, something like so. We'll take our ground plane. Right click, assign new material. Let's go with a, uh, a Fong E and make that nice and black. All right, I'm gonna use an HDRI image. I'm gonna go to my render settings. Mental ray, there we go. Indirect lighting, um, image based lighting, there we go. And I'm gonna use my global illumination setting. I'm going to select an HDRI file. And uh, let's see, what are we going to use? I got uh, quite a few, but let's see. Um, yeah, I use this one a lot, but I, I kind of like it. Okay, so we got that. Let's set up some lighting. So create lights and we'll go with an area light. Hit W, pull that up. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard so I can aim my light. Something like that. And we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate that guy. Pull it over here, something like so. And we're getting pretty close. Let's go to our light setting. Uh, here we go, area light shape, shadows. Use ray trace shadows, that's fine. And in our render settings, uh, let's make sure that ray tracing is activated, which is here in our quality tab. And it is, that's fine. And let's give this a quick render, okay? so. That looks fine. We'll increase quality to about 1.5. And in our common tab, we'll go to HD 720. Okay, let's see if this has any resemblance to a crumbled piece of paper. Just give this a sec. Looks uh, pretty dark. I'll just uh, tweak that a sec. Hang on, guys. Just simply not enough light going on. Lights, point light. We'll do one right there. That should help quite a bit. And control D, one over there. Select these two. Go to our shadows. Yeah, we're good, okay. Let's give this another go. Now 
Not too bad. <clears throat> well, it's not bad at all. So this looks like a, uh, a crumbled ball of paper. Uh, the trick is you don't want to smooth the mesh too much because if you make this uh, high res, the problem there is that you will uh, get something that looks more like a, a ball of cloth instead of uh, paper. These little angles here kind of give a sense that we're talking about paper here, okay? So, uh, Juliana, hopefully this is helpful for you. Um, and if you've got any questions, let me know. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and see you guys next time. Bye.